Hi everyone. This term in our health lessons, we're going to be learning about safe living. This video will take you through lessons one through to six. So when you're learning from home, you can access this video for that week's learning. And Mrs Seymour will always let you know on Dojo which week we are up to so you can find the correct place on the video. All right, let's have a look at our first lesson for today. Today we are learning about staying safe in the classroom. Even though we're not in our classroom at the moment, it's still great to know how to stay safe in there. And we already know some of these rules that we're going to talk about today. So we'll see how many of them you can remember. This is a copy of our school expectations. There's a lot of writing on here, but we're not looking all, at all of that today. What we're going to be looking at, you can see where that arrow is pointing. That arrow is pointing to classroom and it's in the column called safe. You can see that red word there um, in the red column, it says safe. So how do we stay safe in our classroom? Two of the ways we can stay safe are by walking in the classroom. It says there, we walk in the classroom and we use equipment safely. So let's have a look at what that might mean. So what does it look like in our classroom to stay safe? So we've got a little poster over there that says, keep calm and tuck in your chair. Mrs. Seymour is always talking about tucking in chairs. And I know I have spoken to all of you about what might happen if we don't tuck our chairs in, because sometimes people can trip over and hurt themselves very badly. So whenever you are sitting in your chair, you should have it tucked in near the table. And if you are finished with your chair and you're moving away from it, you need to tuck it under the table so nobody trips over. We walk in our classroom. It's not a playground. Even though sometimes we do play in our classroom, it is not a running place. So we always walk in our classroom so that we're not bumping into furniture or into other people and falling over and hurting ourselves. So there we've got a poster that says, safety first, walk, don't run. We carry scissors carefully. And I remember right at the beginning of the year, we talked about this. We always hold the blade of the scissors down. We don't wave the scissors around when we're walking. And when we want to hand them to somebody, we hand them with the blade facing away from the person. So you're not going to poke that person and hurt them. And even when we're using scissors in the classroom, we only use scissors to cut paper never anybody's body or hair or anything else, just paper or maybe cardboard that we use in the classroom. And another way to stay safe in the classroom is to put our equipment away. So we don't leave things lying all over the floor because that could cause somebody to trip. And I know the children in Kaysan are super good at packing away all of their equipment when they are finished with it. That's very important. What other rules can you think of? Today, I would like you to make a list of some class rules. You can add the ones that we've already spoken about, and you might be able to think of some of your own rules for keeping everybody safe in our classroom. At the moment, while we're all stuck at home because of the coronavirus, we know that it's really important to wash our hands. So maybe that's something you could think about because Staying healthy and staying clean is part of being safe. So maybe that's another rule we could add to our list, washing our hands and keeping our classroom clean. I would also like you to draw a picture of you acting safely in our classroom. So choose some, one of the rules and draw a picture of you following one of those rules. All right, that's all for this week, boys and girls. I look forward to seeing your work on Jojo and join in next week for lesson number two. This week, we are learning about staying safe in the playground. Again, most of us are not in the playground at school at the moment, but these are still good lessons to learn when you're playing in any kind of playground, even in your own backyard, at the school playground or at a park.
here we are looking at our school expectations again, and this time we are still looking in the safe column, but we're looking at playground. It says there, we stay in our play areas, we play games by the rules, and we wear our hats. So let's have a little think about those things. We stay in our play areas. At school, we call that staying um, in bounds. So we don't go out of bounds because out of bounds means you are going to a place where the teachers can't see you. So sometimes that means going behind buildings or going at the back of the toilets. And when we're out at lunchtime or recess time, if you go to those areas where the teacher can't see you and you hurt yourself, then nobody will know and that can be very dangerous. So whenever we are out in the playground, we must stay where we can be seen. We play games by the rules. That means we follow rules so that people don't get hurt. Okay, so if you're playing a game, maybe you're playing a game with um, the basketballs and we have rules about taking turns and we have rules about walking or running. It means that if you follow those rules, hopefully you won't get hurt and everybody will have a good time playing the game. And we wear our hats and we're going to learn a bit more about sun safety next week. But wearing our hats means that we are keeping our heads and our faces very safe from the sun. Let's have a look at the next page now. All right, so think about our play equipment at school. We have our kindergarten equipment. And think about other parts of our playground, like the basketball court and the grass areas. So some of our rules might also include walk on the hard surfaces because we know what happens when we run and sometimes we fall and we can hurt ourselves very badly. And I know there's already been lots of scraped knees this year from people running on those hard surfaces. Uh, we've spoken about wearing your hat outside and there we've got a poster that says no hat play in the shade. We're lucky at our school we've got lots of shady areas so if you don't have a hat that's where you need to play. I wonder if you can think of some other rules that we could have in our playground that would keep all the boys and girls and the teachers safe at school. Have a little think about that and you might be able to tell your parents or do a write some writing or drawing about it. Let's have a look at the next page. All right, so there we've got what other rules for the playground can you think of? So just like last week, I'd like you to make a list. So make a list of playground rules. You can add the ones we've spoken about already and you might add some of your own. Those rules might even include playing nicely and being friendly to people so that everybody stays safe and happy in our school. That's what we want to see. Draw a picture of you acting safely in our playground. You might Think about our kindergarten equipment and how Mrs Seymour always says, let's go up the ladder and down the slide. We never climb up the slide and down the ladder because that is a little bit unsafe. So think about some of the rose rules and maybe even think about um, how high you might sometimes climb and whether that's safe or unsafe. All right, I look forward to seeing your work on Dojo. Have a good time. Hi boys and girls, today's safe living lesson is all about sun safety. That's very important, especially living in Australia because it does get very hot in this country and we need to know how to protect our skin from the sun because the skin can actually do a lot of damage to your sun and it can even make you quite sick if you're not too careful. So let's have a look today at how we can be sun safe. Here's our poster again, no hat, play in the shade. Have a think about why we have this rule at school. Can you explain to mum or dad why we have this rule at school and what that means? What other ways can we stay sun safe? So it's not just about hats, there are some other things we can do. Why is it important to be sun safe? And something else I want you to understand is that we need to be sun safe even on cloudy days because when it's cloudy and we can't see the sun, it doesn't mean the sun's not there. The sun is very, very strong and powerful and it can even come through the clouds and burn our skin. So even on a, on a cloudy day, you must be sun safe. So did you have a think about why we have this rule? 
Well, we have this rule to keep us safe, don't we? We don't want anyone to get burnt on their face or their ears or their nose. And that's why we ask you to wear a hat when you are playing. And if you don't have a hat, play in the shade because the shade can protect you from the sun as well. Some other ways we can stay sun safe could be making sure we wear good clothing, not just at school, but anytime we are out. Clothing that covers our shoulders and covers most of our body to keep the sun away from our precious skin because our skin is very important and we don't want it to get burnt. Getting burnt skin lots and lots of times can lead to something called skin cancer, which can make you very sick and nobody wants that to happen, boys and girls. Some other ways we can stay sun safe are to wear sunglasses and we can even wear sunglasses at school in the playground if you have some. And um, you wear, uh, sorry, wearing sunblock uh, or sunscreen is another good idea, especially when you're going to the beach or the pool. But even if you're just playing outside for a little while, you should have some sunscreen on. All right, we're going to watch a little video very soon about that and that will give you some other ideas. Today's activity is using this body outline and I'm going to post one of those on Dojo for you to print. If you can't print, that's okay. You might be able to get mum or dad to help you draw a body like that or you might be able to draw your own. So use the body outline to draw a picture of the clothing you should wear and other items you would need to be sun safe. So we know about wearing hats. So maybe on your body, you could draw a hat. You could draw some clothes on your body and think about some other things that you could use. Maybe some sunblock, you might be able to draw a bottle of sunblock and maybe even some shade. A good way to get shade on a sunny day is using an umbrella. We don't have to just use umbrellas for a rainy day. If you're walking in the sun, you can always put an umbrella up to protect your face and your body from the sun. So I can't wait to see those pictures of how to be sun safe with your body. And when you're finished, there is a video here that you can watch on YouTube called Slip, Slop, Slap, Seek and Slide. So have a look at that video and that will show you a fun way to remember how to be sun safe with a little song. And I'll tell you that that song's been around a long, long time. Mrs. Seymour used to watch that song when I was a little girl, but they've added some extra parts to the song now uh, about keeping extra safe. All right, boys and girls, have fun doing that activity. I'll see you soon. Hi, okay, K-Sun. Today in Safe Living, we are learning about being safe in the home. So we've learned already about being safe at school, in the playground and in the sun. So today we're going to look at how you can be safe in your home. So think about what other places do we need to stay safe in? We've talked, like I said, about school and about in the playground. You might think about staying safe at the shops or at the park or at the beach or at the swimming pool. But today we're going to learn about staying safe in our homes. One of the most dangerous places in a home is the kitchen. Why do you think it is a dangerous place? I'll give you a minute to think about that. Maybe you can tell someone at your house why you think a kitchen is a dangerous place. I wonder if you said anything about in a kitchen, there are electrical appliances that can hurt you. There is hot water and also hot food. There might be medicines and chemicals and sharp knives. So when we are in a kitchen, it is important that we act safely. Here are some pictures of some things you might find in the kitchen. You can see there's a picture just there of a little girl and she's holding a pot. Now that pot is on the stove top and it's probably got some hot water or some hot food in it. And you can see that that little girl looks like she's about to tip that pot on top of her. And that could be so dangerous, boys and girls, if it is boiling hot. So one way we could be safe in the kitchen is to make sure that the handles of the pots are never sticking out so that children can't reach them or knock them. So whenever mum or dad are cooking, we should always have the pot handles facing in and not sticking out 
to get knocked over. And if you are a boy or a girl who is in the kitchen while mum or dad is cooking, you should always stay away from those hot places because I would hate to see you get hurt from the boiling water. There's a picture in the middle there of someone using a sharp knife to cut. And we do need sharp knives because a lot of food we cut is very hard. But sharp knives are only for adults, boys and girls. If you need to cut something, you need to ask a grown up to help you because sharp knives can be very dangerous. And when you are using a sharp knife, it's important that we keep our fingers right away from that sharp blade. The next picture is a picture that is it's under a sink in a cupboard under a sink and often that is where people keep the cleaning products in the kitchen it might be the things that we wash our dishes with or spray the bench tops to clean them and those things are great for cleaning but they are never great for swallowing so we never put any of those things into our mouth or into our body they are called chemicals and chemicals can make us very very sick so those chemicals are never to go into your mouth they are only for spraying or for using in the kitchen. And usually a grown up would help you if you are using those products. Okay, so those are three ways that we can stay safe in the kitchen by making sure we don't tip hot water on ourselves, we don't use sharp knives, and we don't touch the chemicals. Now, today's activity, boys and girls, there's a, a picture here for you to print. Um, if you can't print the picture, just have a good look at the picture and you might be able to point out the dangerous things to someone in your family. If you can print it, you can colour in that picture. And I would like you to circle all the dangerous things you can see there. I can see a few things already. I can see a hot cup of coffee that's very close to the edge of the bench. I can see an ironing board with an iron that looks like it might be switched on. There's a bucket of water with a little puddle there. That's something we didn't talk about, but sometimes kitchens can be slippery places. And there's another little girl who looks like she's reaching up to the stove top. There's also some things inside some cupboards there. So see what you can spot and circle the things that you think are dangerous. All right, stay safe, everybody. I'll see you soon. Hi, boys and girls. Today we are learning about being safe around pets. What kind of pets do you have at home? You might have a dog, a cat, a fish or a bird. You might have a different type of pet. I have a cat called Felix. I think you've all seen a photo of him. Maybe you don't have a pet, but one of your neighbours or family members might have one. It is really important to know how to be safe around pets. Why do you think we need to be safe around pets? Can you tell someone in your home why you think it's important to be safe? Some pets have sharp teeth or claws. You can see that dog, he looks like a friendly dog, but his teeth are sharp, aren't they? And there's a cat over there and cats have super sharp claws. I know that because Felix has very sharp ones. So sometimes animals can be afraid and they might bite or scratch to protect themselves. Okay, so even if a dog or a cat seems friendly, if they get scared by something, they can sometimes bite or scratch because they are trying to not get hurt themselves. So that's why it's very important if you are patting a dog or a cat that you do that gently and nicely and don't scare the dog or cat because they might react and hurt you. If you see a person with a dog that you would like to pat, you should always ask the dog's owner first. Now we know this because when Ned is at our school, we usually check with Mrs. Antala if we can pat him. Um, and we know Ned's a friendly dog, but not all dogs might be friendly. So it's very important that you ask an adult first about patting the dog. And just like when we pat Ned, first we must let the dog sniff our hand and then we can pat the dog. When the dog sniffs your hand, they can tell if you're a nice person if, and if you're going to be friendly to them. And that makes the dog feel comfortable and they will be quite happy for you to pat them after they've had a little smell, okay? So you can see that picture of the lady down the bottom. She's putting her hand out for the dog to smell and the dog is having a little sniff so then the lady will be able to pat him.
If you are out at the park and you see a dog with no owner, do not go near the dog. It might look cute, it might look friendly, but if you don't know that dog, you shouldn't go near the dog. Okay, you should always wait until there's a grown-up nearby and especially a grown-up who knows that dog. If the dog comes near you, try to stay calm and slowly walk away to a safer place. Maybe you should walk slowly over to your own parents so that they can protect you. Never run from the dog because the dog might think you are playing and it might chase you. So down the bottom there, we've got a picture of a boy running from the dog and I've put a line across that to say, don't do that. That's not a safe idea. Today's activity is a picture that you can print. And if you can't print that, just have a look at it and you might be able to point some things out. You can see on this picture, there are some people interacting with dogs. Some of them are doing safe things with dogs and some of them are being unsafe. And next to those pictures, you'll see some little squares. In those squares, I want you to tick in the square if you think the person is being safe and put a cross if the person is being unsafe. So a couple of things I can see, I can see someone there with a dog and they're feeding their dog behind a fence. That's very safe because if a dog is behind a fence, we know it's not going to run away and chase somebody else. Um, I can see somebody on the road running away from a dog. So I don't know if that's very safe. I can see someone asking if they can pat the dog. So that looks like a safe thing to do. Have a look at some of the other pictures and see if you can work out the safe and unsafe things to do. Hi okay, son. today in Safe Living, we are learning about strategies for staying safe. So that means how can we use our brain to keep us safe and what actions can we take if we are feeling unsafe? So we need to learn some strategies to keep us safe when we feel like we might be in trouble. There's a video to watch here called Little Red Riding Hood. When you're watching the video, I would like you to think about the things that Little Red Riding Hood did that were unsafe and got her into a bit of trouble. And what kind of things could Red Riding Hood have done to make sure she stayed safe? Maybe she could do things a little bit differently next time she goes to visit her grandma. So what kind of trouble did Red Riding Hood get into? And what do you think she could have done to stay safe? Have a talk to someone at your home about that. A good strategy to use when we feel unsafe is no, go, tell. When we use no, go, tell, the no means say no to the person who is bothering you. Go means go away from that person. And tell means tell a trusted adult about what happened. Okay, so if you are out somewhere or maybe if you're at school and you start to feel a bit unsafe you can say no go sorry you can say no and then go away and then tell someone what happened if you're at school that trusted adult would be a teacher who's on duty or your own teacher me or if you are out with your parents maybe you're at the park and somebody starts being a bit mean to you you can say no to that person you can go away from that person and you can go and tell your parent or your family member about what happened. Think about a place you feel safe. It might be at home, at a family member's house or at school. Write a sentence and draw a picture of your safe place. There's an example of a sentence here. I feel safe at somewhere so you can write the place in there because so because is telling us the reason 
You might say, I feel safe at home because my parents look after me and keep me safe. All right, thanks boys and girls. I'll look for your work on Dojo. I'll see you soon. Bye.